Hey everybody, we're back from winter break, uh, December 2017, it's July 2018 already. And we're excited to record more videos on the YouTube channel, we got a lot more subscribers now, so we have an adoring audience that we, we, have, to, we have to make people happy, right? <laughs> so this is Gregory Nermang. Uh, he's, a, uh, he's not a grad student anymore at Ohio State, so he passed his dissertation defense. So yep. he's Dr. Gregory Nermang. Um, say something about what your defense was about. My defense was about ultra-intense lasers accelerating electrons to relativistic energies. Uh, and, pretty intense, extreme stuff. Yeah. And, and, what, and what, what do you do to try to understand oh, yes. those sorts of things? Um, specifically, what I do is I work on computational simulations. So very similar stuff to what you guys are learning on this channel. Cool. Yeah, Gregory is one of the best programmers I know, scientific programmers. Thank so, you. It's um, <laughs> very kind of you to say. <laughs> Thank you. There's a reason you're here, my friend. <laughs> um, so, so I'm excited. To, this is one of my favorite interactives. And so this is a lot more visual than some of the other coding activities that we've had. We, we've got you know circles going around on the screen with arrows and stuff. This one's way better than that. So, so Gregory, go ahead and, and hit enter there to bring it up. The link to this should be uh, below the, the YouTube screen there. So you should be able to click on the link in the description. And this is, uh, basically, there's two speakers here that are creating a sound wave. Now, you might want to turn the volume down on your speakers before you turn this th thing on so you don't annoy everyone in the house or something. But there's two speakers here creating the same sine wave at the same frequency, same wavelength. And then there's a microphone up here that is sort of measuring the sound. And the fun thing is you can actually move the, mic the microphone around to kind of explore the pattern. And if you put it on a place where those waves destructively interfere, then you don't hear anything. But if you put it on a place where the waves are constructively interfering, like there, or maybe there, uh, in that position, those waves are working with each other, uh, making it very, very loud. So sometimes when you're at a concert, if you're walking through, uh, you might notice like the bass is really loud in certain places. Um, that's kind of the same kind of effect going on. The other fun thing you can do is you can take the microphone and put it in the bottom right. And this is a lot like noise-canceling headphones. So in the environment, you know, there's all sorts of noisy stuff. Uh, but if you're wearing headphones, you have a speaker right next to your ear. If that speaker is doing exactly the right thing at the same frequency but with the right phase, it can destructively interfere with that wave and, you just, and it's just perfectly quiet there. So that's why noise-canceling headphones work so well. So this is kind of a prototype for that. It's also very similar to ripples on a pond. So if you Google ripples on a pond, uh, I think there's a good video by Veritasium about that. And basically, if you just go to a pond or if you want to fill up your your sink at home with water and you want to take, you know, just take two fingers and do this at regular intervals, it'll make this kind of an interference pattern. So it's also kind of related to that and it's also related to quantum mechanics, right? Yes. Yeah. So Gregory's a local, Gregory knows more about quantum <laughs> mechanics than I do by a long shot. Wow. So I have to rely on him for all the quantum stuff. But it's what, in particular, what about quantum mechanics does it closely relate to? Um, it is similar to the double slit experiment, in which if you have two slits and you send an electron or a stream of electrons through the slits, those electrons will act as waves and they will actually constructively interfere and destructively interfere as well. And you'll create a very similar pattern if you put a screen at the back of uh, the slit and you observe the electrons that come through. Yeah, and the same is true of light. So if you it's have same you know, a laser beam that's on some sort of piece of metal that has two little slits in it, you'll get uh, this kind of a pattern emerging as well. Mm -hmm. So this, is, this, this thing is kind of a gateway to quantum mechanics and wave interference. All, so there's all sorts of, of, uh, of things that it's related to. Now I have a challenge, Gregory. So you said you still have more energy after finishing your PhD, right? I do. Okay, so here's the challenge. What I want to do is I want to come up with a mathematical formula for the line that describes this line of destructive interference. This line? Uh, both of them, actually. OK. Yeah. So you think you can do it? I think we can do it. All right, so let's go to the code. So that's in this next tab up here. Uh, now, for you guys at home, there's going to be a link at the bottom of, of the video in the description. You can get to this screen. 
The first thing you want to do is you want to turn the volume down on your computer or your laptop. Uh, you can you can turn it up later, but what you don't want to do what you don't want to do is you don't want to sort of blast speakers when you hit play with this thing because it's going to make some noise. Um, next thing you want to do is you want to click this that little arrow there to 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 minimize the console screen. You don't really need that this time. And then, so Gregory, go ahead and press play, and we'll see what we get here. So we have this line here, which is not really aligning with anything on the screen, and we gotta we gotta figure out exactly what slope to make that line to, to line up with the destructive interference pattern. So Gregory, why don't you show them where this line is defined in the code? Okay. Thanks. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the code really quick. Uh, let me zoom in so you guys can see this a little bit more clearly. So if we look down here at the draw function, which controls drawing on the screen, the operative line that is uh, actually being drawn is here, where we're drawing a series of points. Okay, And there's a lot of, of um, technicalities around this code. You can explore it on your own. But the main operative line that determines what we actually draw in this red line is here, where, as you can see, we're defining y equals m times x plus b. Okay, And as you guys probably remember uh, or know, uh, this is the basic equation for a straight line. Okay, Now, here we actually define before this line um, b is equal to 0 and m is equal to 1. So what we are essentially drawing is we can just go ahead and pretend like this is 0. We can pretend that this is 1. We're actually drawing the straight line y equals x. OK? So let me go ahead and uh, undo what I did. All right. So just to make sure that um, we are indeed drawing the straight line uh, y equals x, let's actually play with these uh, values a little bit. So let me change m up here and make it 3 instead. OK? So let me go ahead and stop. Or actually, I can just start it like that. And as you can see, uh, the slope is much more steeper. Remember, uh, what m is equal is equal to the rise over the run. So a larger value of m means that it's going to rise faster and thus be more steep. OK? All right, so that's what we're actually plotting for a red line. And we will actually want to see if we can derive a formula in which this red line will always line up with these interference patterns. Great. Uh, so we're going to get into a little bit of math here. So first disclaimer, uh, there's no calculus, there's no trigonometry in what we're about to do. Okay, Everything that we're going to do is algebra. There's going to be square roots and squares, and that's about as bad as it's going to get. A little bit of geometry, a little bit of Pythagorean theorem. So if, you're, if you've done Pythagorean theorem, you've done square roots and squares, you're good. Just stick with us, and you'll, you'll survive this in one piece.